Hi, everybody. It is now July 2nd, 2021. If you have ever seen the Macy's fireworks display, you know that it's pretty spectacular. I feel like crazy is now just exploding like the Macy's July 4th fireworks. Oh, my God. It's all over the world. And I'm going to get into it. First, I want to show you something. Okay. Uh, what? Where do I go first? Oh, I'll go here. Okay. 103 degrees last night or yesterday afternoon at 3 p.m. Right? Okay. Uh, you see these temperatures for the week? So today was supposed to be 96, 95, 93, 93, 93, 88, 85. So this morning, well, last night, uh, well, first late in the afternoon, I suddenly see the clouds appear. Oh, massive, looking like they're just kind of grown up from the ground. And there were dark clouds. And I heard the faint sound of thunder. I thought, okay, we're going to get a thunderstorm. Then the wind started. I get nervous for power outages. So that didn't occur. Later on, probably around midnight, the wind was pretty intense. And it started getting much cooler, rapidly. Like, I was okay. Felt good. Felt good. So this morning, I look, and I've just been checking out the temperature. What? 8 a.m., 58. And now they have a whole new, uh, well forecast for the week 62 63 63 62 61 60 62 63 with the lows 54 54 53 um not the wow 40 degree drop in one day what's going on i thought okay it's a glitch it's just a glitch well i look at other sites uh, I think this is the Weather Channel, uh, 58, and exceedingly high humidity. Now, at this time, it was really nice. It was such a break from the heat. But the humidity uh, that they were claiming, I don't know, did I capture that? Yeah, humidity, 96 percent. No, it felt really, it was a nice, nice morning. So that was 80 at uh, eight o'clock weather channel. Then I, I think this is wonder ground. I don't know, but 62. Okay. At 828, uh, 92%. So <laughs> what, what's going on here? Uh, then I get to an hour later, still 58, but I can feel the heat now rising. Still 58 at 9 a.m. And let's see, 10 a.m., 59 degrees. And this was still at a, like a 10 o'clock, um, Forecast 63. Oh my God, wait. This is also 11, 16, 87 degrees. So the reason why I kept taking these was because I could feel the heat. It was just coming in the window. It was such a different, you know, from this morning, which was really nice, to, okay, the heat's coming it's coming fast. All right, 89. Good. I think this is the weather channel. And I, I, yeah, they were quite right. This was around noontime. And, well, this is 63 from Wonderground, I think. 
I might have got them, you know, mixed up, but um, this is at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 59 degrees. This is the this is the forecast that you get on uh, weather.com right here. So I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? How could so many sites get it so wrong? 64 at 2 p.m. And <laughs> well, I'm sitting here sweating. It's five, but at 2 p.m. it was quite hot. Okay. Um, but our, the weather channel, okay, what happened? What happened here? So you, I believe, got it right when it was 87, 89, yeah, this was at, uh, 1157 a.m., and then they post 63 at 219. All right, well, not quite sure what to say, but something's very wrong here. Very, very wrong. So I don't have a temperature uh, gauge, so I don't know what the temperature is now. It feels hot, uh, better than it has been for days. That's nice. But, you know, I would, I'd like to get out of this heat dome that they actually say is just going to last for a while. Then I saw a headline today that it said, we're in a semi-permanent condition here in the West. <laughs> semi-permanent? Well, if they want to make it semi-permanent, they can. Semi-permanent, I don't, I don't know what the hell that means. Maybe it means permanent for spring, summer, fall. Winter, it'll be cold, but... And the other thing is, this was such an amazing slap in the face. Amazing slap in the face, considering how many are really suffering now, financially, that the White House could put this up. And I, I don't think I got any comments. I can't remember any comments about this. 16 cents. You know, I think we're so used to just being um, treated like shit that we now have just internalized that we are that, and whatever the hell they do, it's fine. It's not fine with me. Americans, you can save 16 cents this year because the economy is doing so well. All right. Uh, please, if you'd like to comment on this, I would, I would appreciate it because I'm feeling quite alone here. Um, it's outrageous. The cost of a 4th of July cookout in 2021 is down 16 cents from last year. Okay, well, <sighs> owners face fines as council in Australia introduces 24-hour cat curfew. Cats don't go out anymore. When allowed to roam, cats are at a much higher risk of illness and injury. Geez, Mayor Lisa Cooper uh, that's true for all, all four-leggeds. Don't take your dog out. It's at risk of illness and injury. Don't take your kids out. Two-legged, they're at risk of injury. They could fall on the sidewalk or, or topple over when they're riding a bike. Don't let them out. Keep them inside always. Yeah. Introduced by the Knox City Council, a new rule which will require owners to keep their cats on their property at all times. When allowed to roam, cats are at a much higher risk of illness and injury. 
Keeping cats within their owner's property also protects wildlife and prevents them causing nuisance for neighbors and their pets. Okay. Okay. Knox Council needs to be more considerate of the well-being and basic rights of older cats? Really? A petition calling for it to be reviewed? It has 740 signatures. Now this is, this is some city in Melbourne. Okay. Well, um, the petition went on adding that the curfew will remove basic freedoms to which the creatures have become accustomed, calling on the council to instead impose the restrictions on newly registered kittens that are still young enough to be conditioned. Let cats alive today continue to live their lives like they always have. That's the petition. It is. This petition proposes the gradual phasing in of this curfew, if it must happen, where it only applies to newly registered kittens, which is a more logical and compassionate way of introducing this rule, as opposed to the current plans to have it apply as a blanket rule for all cats, regardless of age or habits. What the hell is wrong with people? This council should be disbanded. Okay, keep your cats inside because they're at risk of illness or injury. And they're a nuisance to neighbors. You know, oh boy. Okay, I, I don't talk about controlling every aspect of your life. Well, this is so outrageous. You know, look. I am of <clears throat> the uh, thought that every life deserves to live the best life that it can possibly live. Free. Free. So, there's an awful lot of people who keep their cats indoors all the time because they don't want their cats to get injured or die from whatever. Okay. That to me is like a miserable existence for the cat. That to me is that means that that cat is property for you. For you. And because you you know, don't want to experience any kind of, you know, hardship or stress or, you know, you're just going to keep them all inside because it works for you. It may not work for the cat. And I can't do that. And every night I'm stressed because I can't get my cats inside during the night. But should something happen, I know that my cats are quite happy. And I'd rather them be happy for a shorter amount of, peer, of time than be miserable. And they are when I, I have tried to keep them inside. And they make my life miserable because, wow, um, they sure do know how to make sure I never sleep, but I'd rather them be happy and have a quality life than have the quantity and not be happy. So this is so outrageous and somebody on the council doesn't like cats, feels that they're just a nuisance, and wants everybody to keep them inside. Well, I hope people, you know, write, get another petition up because this is such a, wow. How are people not just 
outraged over this. Um, instead, oh, please, please, could you just do a gradual phasing, please? I beg of you, counsel. I know that you have all power, and I'm just a weeny little nothing. Italy. Italy. Italian city bans evening walks and will fine tourists 860 euros if caught. What? Really? Florence. Mayor of Florence. These people, these, oh my God, they're such control freaks. Okay. The mayor of Florence confirmed that walking in the streets between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., no good. Banned on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings until further notice. <laughs> oh, my God. The world has just gone completely and utterly bonkers. The only exception is for people who are using the bars and restaurants in the area. So how are you going to get to them? What if you want to go, oh, well, it's 9 p.m. How do you get to the bar? How do you get there if you can't do an evening walk? Okay, well, the fines will range from 400 to 1,000 euros. My God, it just increased. Reading a couple of paragraphs. Uh, for, you know, for those who break the rules. The rules which would only allow tourists to visit the area if they have a receipt from a bar. New rules. No more walking in Florence. Uh, I think that'll cut down on mm, that, you know, going to Italy. Well, honey, we can't go out for an evening walk, but it's beautiful out. Well, they want to make sure that there's not a lot of people congregating on the streets. So, hey, we can go to a bar. All right, let's drink up. Let's just get drunk. Hell, man, this world's insane. Well... Five bizarre new plagues that have made headlines in the United States within the last 30 days. Michael Schneider. All right. Rattlesnakes. Moving into urban areas in California in large numbers. It's the heat. It's the drought. They're found under porches and yards, nearby pools, under children's play equipment. And there's a Len Ramirez who has a company, Rattlesnake Removal Company, and boy, is he busy. They're everywhere. They're every in potted plants, too. A plague of grasshoppers. Oh, we've got to kill them. We've got to spray toxic, toxic, toxic herbicides, pesticides. Get rid of them. Get, it's the killing campaign. Yes, birds dropping dead in very large numbers. Indiana, unusual bird deaths have now been reported in 15 different counties. And authorities have absolutely no idea why this is happening. They're just dropping dead. Well, <clears throat> I posted on this, but there are more states. Large numbers of birds are also dropping dead in Washington, D.C., Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Kentucky, and Ohio. And then we have the unprecedented flooding in Detroit. Well, I don't know if that's a plague, but hey, the water, good chance, contains raw sewage. How often has this happened? Michael, hey, it's happened a lot. In fact, in all of these fa uh, flash floods and, oh, my God, the sewage and the drain, we just couldn't keep up, and it just comes out into the water. Historic rainfall on Friday caused power outages in Metro Detroit. At least 1,000 cars abandoned as highways filled up with water and countless flooded residential basements in the area. The flooding produced more viral videos. I didn't see any of these. A man jet skiing down the street in Dearborn. A surreal image of people playing in a flooded part on the interstate as if it were a beach. 
on one of the Great Lakes, prompting an even more surreal tweet from Michigan State Police. Finally in the things I would never thought I would have to say, do not go into the water. Water has debris, sharp metal, submerged cars, gasoline, oil floating in it. There is also a good chance that there's sewage. In other words, it's gross. That's what the state police sent out as a message. And of course, the worst heat wave to ever hit the Northwest. Unprecedented. It's a heat dome. It's a dome that is going to be around for a while. Things won't immediately cool down in much of the Pacific Northwest. Forecasts have inland areas such as Spokane, Washington, Boise, Idaho, reaching triple-digit temperatures for the rest of the week. Now, I'm new to Montana. I have to say, you guys in upstate South Carolina, don't leave me comments how beautiful the weather is there. Thank you. Okay, so why are so many crazy things happening in the United States all at the same time? I don't know. Michael, you've been at this for a very, very long time. Very long time. In fact, I've posted videos, oh, years ago, saying, Michael, look into weather modification, please. Nope. He never has. So, I do believe that our nation has entered a time of tremendous instability, and I believe that it's going to get a whole lot worse. Hey, you guys who claim I'm negative, come over here. Leave him comments. Tell him. You're so negative, Michael. Stable conditions of the last several decades are disappearing, and I believe that we are now entering an era when global events are going to get really wild. Yeah, they're pretty friggin' wild now. They're going to get exceptionally wild. And while, so far, I think most of you, I can say this for myself, yep, hanging on to my sanity, but it's getting harder. Boy, oh boy, most Americans are still anticipating that things will get back to the way they were in the old days, but at this point, the old days are gone for good. All right, come on over, and you tell Michael Schneider that he's so negative. Do you know that most people are now writing or speaking this way? Oh, reality caught up to everybody. Uh, how could things be good when you have this guy as your president? Oh, I fought on Afghanistan. Uh, I want to talk about happy things, man. Well, did you hear that? The reporter wants to ask him about Afghanistan, and Joe Biden says, hey, I want to talk about happy things, ma'am. See, he's the positive type. You know? Oh, just look at what's positive. Oh, you're so negative. You need to be positive and delusional like me. Here's another one. I'm not going to answer any more question on Afghanistan. Look, it's 4th of July. I'm concerned that you guys are asking me questions that I'll answer next week, but I'm, this is a holiday weekend. I'm going to celebrate it. There's great things happening. Economy's grown faster than any time in 40 years. We've got a record number of new jobs. COVID deaths are down 90%. Wages are up faster than any time in 15 years. We're bringing, out our, bringing our troops home. We have uh, all across America, people are going to ball games and doing good things. This is a good, I'll, be, I'll answer all your negative questions, not negative, your legitimate question. Are you concerned that there is a potential this weekend in places where vaccination levels are Put on a happy face. I don't want to talk about negative things, man. You know, the economy, it's doing so well. And, oh, wages have increased, uh, what, 
uh, more the first time in 15 years, whatever. The, every freaking thing he said is a lie. Everything. Everything he said is a lie. Okay. I want to talk about happy things that I'm just going to make up in my own head. Yay. Now he's okay. And he's not going to suffer the consequences of his lies. But we are. We are. Here, this is the blue version of that red version on the economy that Trump spoke. This is blue Biden speaking. Uh, essentially the same crap, the same lies that Trump did. Though Trump was much more dramatic, maybe because he, you know, he had a show on TV and all that kind of stuff. Biden, but it's the same thing. All lies, but put on a happy face, America, because the economy is just doing swell. Swell. It's a good morning. We're getting prepared to celebrate Independence Day. Uh, today's job news uh, brought us uh, something else to celebrate. This morning, we learned that in June, our economy created 850,000 jobs. 850,000 jobs. Wages went up for American workers. We've now created over 3 million jobs since it took office. More jobs than have ever been created in the first five months of any presidency in modern history. This is historic progress, pulling our economy out of the worst crisis in 100 years. Driven in part by our dramatic progress in vaccinating our nation and beating back the pandemic, as well as other elements of the American Rescue Plan. Today, the U.S. is the only major advanced economy where the OECD projections of future output are higher today than they were in January 2020 before the pandemic hit. None of this happened by accident. Again, it's a direct result of the American Rescue Plan. In February, the Congressional Budget Office projected 2021 economic growth would be 3.7 percent. Yesterday, they doubled that number to 7.4 percent. The last time the economy grew at this rate was in 1984. More jobs, better wages. That's a good combination. Put simply, our economy is on the move, and we have COVID-19 on the run. Wow. I mean, if Trump comes into office and one month later, one month later, he turned the economy around and it was better during that time than since like in 50 years. Okay. Better wages. The jobs are out there. Yay. We're coming back. And Biden did it. It's that American rescue plan. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, the lies just got more and more outrageous. Yeah, and then the lies in contrast with or in juxtaposition of the actual reality has made this country a psychiatric institution. That's it. Who got those jobs? Who is hiring? More than half of all job gains were bartenders and teachers. This is the case every single month. Every month. Service sector. Yeah, okay. And teachers, of course, because they have a lot of CRT planned for the indoctrination of the American children. Waiters and bartenders. Yay! And waiters and bartenders, they rely on tips. Oh, the economy is just doing fabulously and wages are up. Yeah. Well, let's listen to this. I oppose the American Rescue Plan, and I don't have time to read out all their names today. Okay, on another subject, the official White House account tweeted yesterday, the cost of a 4th of July cookout is down 16 cents from last year. 
and 16 cents. There, there has been a reduction in some of the costs of key components of the 4th of July, a 4th of July barbecue. So that was it, what the tweet was noting. So does the White House think that 16 cents off a barbecue has more of an impact on people's lives than gas being a dollar more this time? Uh, this I would say before. if you don't like hot dogs, you may not care of the reduction of costs. Yep. You don't have to like hot dogs. Yeah, buy a but hot dog for 16 I, I, cents. A reduction like a of, of I will dollars. say that what we are most focused on is the fact that we've created now more than 3 million jobs since the president took office. That's what we're focused on and continuing to implement additional uh, components of his economic Build Back Better agenda. Go ahead. And I don't want to discuss this anymore. Andrea. I'm just going to switch gears completely. Great. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah. Americans are really struggling. They're suffering. They're, they took a, such a dramatic financial hit. Evictions. So many can't even pay their basic, just for basic necessities. And this is our country. Okay. Well, I'm glad that somebody brought up that 16 cents. You know, and I'm looking at all of these mainstream media reporters, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, all right. Well, if you don't like hot dogs, yeah. You know, um, this is so cruel. There's a cruelty now in this country that seems to be spreading faster than the Delta variant. It's cruel to put out that 16 cent tweet when the reality is not what you hear from Biden. If you don't like hot dogs, you might not care about the reduction of cost. You might not care about the 16 cents. Okay. Yeah, a dollar more in gas. Gas has gone up, you know, certainly in Montana. Um, inflation, food. It's not 16 cents, by the way. That's that's okay slap in the face kick you when you down that's what we do here more than 72 million americans are living paycheck to paycheck one in four households has unpaid electricity bills the sba rescinded rescinded their promise to help out restaurants. Rescinded. Hey, well, we know that we promised you money to help, you know, with that COVID destruction that you experienced, but too bad for you. We're just not going to give it. Um, you can read the details. I will link below to this. California begs for more electricity. A shift to renewable power leaves state in the dark. Yes, state energy officials asked the California Independent System Operator, which runs most of the grid, to contract for additional power capacity for July and August on concern it won't be able to meet demand during the evening when solar production fades. The convenient scapegoat, global warming. Blackouts coming. But hey, that July 4th dinner? You're saving 16 cents. U.S. European suppliers scramble to secure Christmas goods as cargo delays worsen. Oh, those of you who have actually left comments saying you're noticing the empty shelves in your area wherever you shop, it's only going to get worse. Suppliers to Walmart, Target, Amazon and other major retailers told Reuters they are placing holiday orders for Chinese-made merchandise. Chinese-made. Why can't we make it here? Oh, that's right. It's a deliberate destruction that a whole lot of Americans just don't want to recognize. So, uh, Christmas shopping this season, well, you're going to have a hard time finding things. Supply, chain, disruption, those containers just sitting there because, well, apparently a whole lot of truckers are missing. 60,000 have violations for substance abuse. 
Number one, marijuana. Number two, cocaine. Number three, methamphetamine. 60,000 truckers can't be driving because of these substance abuse violations. This is just yet another supply chain disruption. I posted a video just a couple of days ago on air conditioning. Oh, well, air conditioning failures. This was in the Northeast, and those air conditioning supply companies, they were unable to get parts because they're sitting in California because of the lack of truckers. Okay, supply chain disruptions. What, what does that cause? Inflation. Shortages cause inflation. We're in big trouble. You want to listen to your lying chief, your leader? Go ahead. Emergency bans on evictions and other tenant protections related to coronavirus. Carol, you can't be talking about those evictions. They have yet another month. It was extended. Oh, I can be talking about those evictions because it is the CDC. You got to prove that you were hurt by coronavirus. Here are all of what they demand from you. Um, and then they say, if you can't get the federal, maybe you'll be able to get a state state uh, hold on evictions. Uh, the majority of states, no hold, no hold on utilities as well. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, through California, of course. No, 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 no. Okay, most, most, no, District of Columbia. No, no. Uh, yes, through um, August 6th, but no hold on utilities. All right. I will link below. You can check it out. Almost all states have no ban on evictions. And evictions are still going through even though the CDC has that ban. So um, some people are protected. A whole lot of people are not. Tracking the COVID-19 recessions effects on food and housing Employment hardships, Census Bureau data show high rates of hardship just within the last year, difficulty getting enough food, a dramatic increase in the number of households struggling to put enough food on the table, some 20 million adults, 10% of all adults in the country, reported that their households sometimes or often didn't have enough to eat in the last seven days, um, inability to pay rent, mortgages, a whole lot of millions and difficulty covering household expenses. Some 66 million adults, 28% of all adults in the country reported it was somewhat or very difficult for their household to cover usual, usual expenses. But you're saving 16 cents. So be grateful, okay? More Americans are just ungrateful. Sideline, job losses. Well, Harvard also came out with their study, um, which is they accidentally reveal how lockdowns crushed the working class while leaving elites unscathed. The picture painted is one of working class destruction. And that was the point. Government lockdown orders devastated workers at the bottom of the financial food chain, but left the upper tier actually better off. Employment for lower wage workers, defined as earning less than 27000 annually, declined by a whopping 23.6% over the time period. Employment for middle aged workers, defined as earning from 27000 to 60000 declined a modest 4.5. However, employment for high-wage workers, defined as earning more than 60000 actually increased 2.4%. The rich are doing well. Everyone else is not. Government lockdowns hurt most those who could least afford it. A host of lethal, unintended consequences. I wish people would just 
see reality for what it is. We are being destroyed deliberately and destroyed in a way with these sadistic, narcissist psychopaths who put out tweets, you're saving 16 cents. And you can check out the Harvard study right here. But it was Harvard and the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation who did this study. Of course, they have to see their success. So, hey, now here we have another wonderful study. The happiest countries and the most miserable. Wow, in North America, Canadians, you're the happiest. But we seem to be pretty happy, too. Are you happy? You know, surveys, polls, studies. Okay. You know, then I come across this. Older Americans stockpiled a record $35 trillion. The time has come to give it away. Transfers to heirs and others are unleashing a torrent of economic activities, including buying homes, starting businesses, giving to charity. Wow, where is that happening? Uh, those who are buying homes, uh, Wall Street, Hedge Fund, BlackRock, you know, they're buying up homes, inflating, you know, the, the, the price of a home, uh, which is just killing off the American dream, which is essentially owning your own home. Okay. If you're still with me, thank you. I do not like what's going on. I don't like what's going on. A whole lot. A whole lot. If we even had just one million Americans who were suffering, that's an enormous amount of money. I, I, I mean, um, number of people. Millions upon millions upon millions. I'm sure we'll not be happy that they're saving 16 cents on their July 4th cookout. In fact, I bet a whole lot of Americans, if they have a cookout, it's going to be pretty paltry. They're going to just, you know, get by. So, I will link below to everything. Uh, you know, it's outrageous what is happening. The cruelty? How did this manifest? It manifested by nobody holding anybody accountable. It's only going to get worse. As Americans get more scared to speak out, it's only going to get worse. This is not the way life should go.